So now the question, how do we really code packets? You have coded packets in the butterfly. Remember, blue, yellow makes a green one. It was a bitwise XOR, very easy. But how does it work when we have this matrix stuff there? So, and how does it work if it's not so simple with the XOR? That is something what we would like to do here. We call the coding packets 101. So the idea is here you have three packets, right? Um, a, that's packet one, packet two, packet three, and we'd say, okay, there's a portion here, a portion here, and a portion here of the packet, same one, and we code them together. And this, how we code them together, this alpha, beta, and gamma, these are random coefficients, while this one is the portion of the packet that we would like to code together. We don't do it in ones, we do it in chunks. And look what we have here, the coding vector. Okay, this we want to create now. And I try to come now from the butterfly to the random linear network codes. So try to understand that. You have two packets, packet one and packet two. And um, what you see here is a bit stream. And the question is, how does the coded packet look down here? The easiest way to do that is over a field size of two. Now, you have to understand what the field size is. The coding matrix, I told you, there's a certain granularity, zeros and ones. A field size of two means we have only two elements, a zero and a one. And the, any calculation of zeros and ones, subtraction, addition, multiplication, division, ends up in the result that's in the field again. We will see about this in the exercise. Now, what you can do, the easiest way is this, Okay, if I only have two elements, I look into one bit position and I just XOR it to get the new coded packet. And we call this a symbol here, right? Now, we need also the encoding vector. What is the encoding vector in this case? So we said we will read into this packet and read into this packet. So we have two, one, one means we look into two in both packets. Alpha is one, beta is one. If beta would be zero, then it would be 0, 1, but the coded packet would just be a co copy of packet 1. Hey, isn't that the same what we did in the, in the butterfly? Okay, that is not really what we would like to do, right? But it is one option to do that. More interesting is if we say, what if we don't look into a binary field? Now we want to have more granularity. So we want to have two to the two field. It's called binary extension field. You will learn about this as well. Now we say, let's take two bits. And when we take two bits and we want to combine those, also our encoding vector has two bits now. Okay? So in this case, randomly I choose one zero and here zero one. Could be anything, right? Whatever you take here. The only thing is, what you, this one, what you choose here randomly, has to be calculated over a higher field. Now it's not only an XOR. So what you have to do is you have to multiply the symbol of packet one with the coding coefficient and XOR that with the multiplication of the symbol of packet two and the coding coefficient for packet two. So what is this here? It's one zero binary, one zero multiplied one zero. So impact here, coding coefficient here, XOR zero 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 one. Could you calculate this? Do you know how to do that? How the multiplication goes over a final field? If you don't know it, good news, there are some lookup tables that will tell you something. And I told you, these are the elements of a field. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Easy, right? Four elements. And if you look into the result, in the multiplication of that, maybe you should add here a multiplication sign, then um, you would see they are the elements of the field again. They're not getting bigger. Okay, then we just have to look it up, right? Um, first of all, this lookup table is quite small, right? It has um, four by four elements. If you have now two bits there, it's uh, in total four bytes, a very small lookup table, easy peasy. You put it into the pocket, you can always use it. So if you want to look it up now, um, zero, uh, one, zero, one, zero, multiplication in the final field to um, binary extension field, two to the two, gives you one, one. 
and the zero, one, uh, zero, zero multiplied zero, 01 gives you the zero, 00 here, and now you XOR that result. It gives you a 11 one and you put it here. Okay? Very easy. Now, why, wait a minute, why is this, why do we have now this, this element here? Could we even calculate it? You can either stick to, the, to your lookup table, or I would like now to explain you how we get all the elements, right? And this is something like, you could even multiply it binary, not over the field, just binary. 1010 zero, one, zero gives you 100. Zero, zero. And now there's something called an irreducible polynome in the same order. So we have carry less multiply plus modulo irreducible polynome. 100 zero, zero, modulo 111 one, one gives you 1, and the rest is 1, 1. And what is the rest goes here. You can try it out with the rest, then you can build up your own lookup table. Good. Um, there's another one. We did it here for um, 1, 1, multiplied 1, 1, and then you see what is the rest is 10 again. Very nice. The irreducible polynomial that we used here, you can look it up. It's just a table of irreducible polynomial of a certain order. Good. Now um, you still need to put the encoding vector here. I said it already 1, 0, and 0, 1. You just put it in the front. This is your encoding vector. You see already the encoding vector gets a little bit bigger now. So the higher the field, the bigger the encoding vector. While the payload is always the same, right? The only thing that increases is the encoding vector here. Good. Now, um, if you want to do it yourself, here, try it out, result is correct. Right? So how did we do this? Take the lookup table here, calculate it yourself, and try if you reach the zero, zero. Good. Now, let's go even higher in the field. If you go higher in the field, the next one is 2 to the 4. And why not other values than binary extension field, I will show you later. Um, we have here a Python um, language called Kodo. It has a Fifi library in top, where you can really make your own lookup tables. So now you have a lookup table that is a little bit larger, right? It's not four elements anymore. Two to the four is 16 by 16. So this lookup table is already bigger in your pocket, right? So what we do now is two to the four means we are looking at four bits here, four bits here, and our encoding vector will be have four bits here and four bits here. And this one gets longer, right? It should be not like this. This is eight bits long. There must be a, a, a sign. We will add this later. So how can we calculate this? Same way, um, we will, take this uh, in the lookup table, we take this in the lookup table, and then XOR it, and this will be the result. We can even go higher, two to the eight. Now we have eight bits here, eight bits here, also eight bits here and here. This means 16-bit encoding vector. Now our lookup table is two to the eight, multiplied two to the eight, eight bit is 64 kilobyte. If you go even higher, you have 8.6 gigabit, right? A gigabyte even. So now it's not so good to put it in the pocket. It's huge, especially if you have IoT devices that cannot carry this amount of, of lookup tables. So what you should do here is online computing. Online computing was what we did before. Online computing costs time, but even lookup table costs time if they are so huge, right? And energy. So depending on your platform, you have two options, lookup tables or online. Um, computing of the um, of the elements. At least this is how you do the the encoding of the packets. And this is straightforward, right? Um, here I've even shown you what, what this is. Um, if you look it up, <laughs> then you model it and then you can calculate it at home. It took me a while, uh, but um, you can do that and then you end up in the result and you plug it here. Okay? Now, once we created the packets, how can we decode them? So we created these packets, now we want the way back. So here, is a, here are four packets. And they are field size two. What does this mean? That this is gray, that doesn't mean I don't care what's in there, right? It's blank. It could be one, zero, whatever. 
But what I'm interested in only is the encoding vector. Why I'm so interested in the encoding vector? Yes, um, not only the same, there should be also not the combination. So what, he, what your colleague said is they should not be linear dependent. What we, we talked about the rank of the matrix, here the rank of the matrix should be 4 and it is. But what I really want to achieve in the end, I want to have packet 1, packet 2, packet 3, packet 4. But what is this on the top? Which packet is this? Correct. It's a linear combination of the second and the third, right? And what is this? This is just the first. And this is the first, the second and the fourth. And this is the first and the fourth. Okay? So, what we will do now, as humans, right? We will say, if this is packet one, then let's do the following. Let's just switch this. So we take the whole packets with the payload and switch them. Click. What happens now is, look at the encoding vector, right? Um, I have here something 1, 0, 0, 1. So this is the pivot element. What we would like to have in the end is 1, 1, 1, 1, everything else is 0. Because then we know packet 4, packet 3, packet 2, packet 1. But here, this is already packet 1. Good job. Here it's packet 2 and packet 3. So what is the next step what I would like to do? This is now the Gaussian elimination. Only in a different way. What is the next step? Packet three minus. The third row minus the fourth row will be our second page because it only has one at the second. This is when you look at them, right? If you are smart, for example, you could even say, wait a minute, I could subtract this from that, I get the packet and I switch it back. Now, I, what I would like to explain to you how Kodo, the library that we're using, is doing it. He would look into this, into the third line, and his goal is to make 0, 0, 1, and the next one whatsoever. So what you can easily do is to subtract this from this and this, right? And later, this is a 0, and then we take this from this, it's also zero. And then suddenly you see, oh, one, 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 zero, 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 zero. It's like the Rubik's magic, first sight done, the corners are correct, right? Then you can continue. What you still have to do is to clean up backwards. So we go forwards, you clean up this one, and now you clean up backwards this one. So the simple thing is to take this one, subtract it from this, and now you have this and subtract it from that. Okay, done. So these operations are not are done. If I say subtract, what is this subtract? It's addition or x or, yeah. In this case, so um, you see what we have done here. Whatever we have done on the bits here, we should also do on the payload. Don't forget this. Okay. So this is very important. If you don't do this on the payload, it's useless if you just uh, stay it there. But in the end, if you, have, if you have, have this on the encoding vector, everything is fine. The payload you can read out. So just to sh show you what we do with field size 2 to the 2. And to, you know, now we have only two packets. You know? they, this means packet 1, packet 2, packet 1, packet 2. So this is a little bit harder to decode. It's not just x or. So how does this work? Still, what we would like to have is 1, 1, 0, 0. What does it mean? Binary 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. That is the, our goal. Huh? So we look at the, into this, right? First, we look at the symbol 1, 1 in binary, which is 3 in decimal, right? Which needs to become 0, 1 bitwise, which is 1 decimal. So this is the 3 and it should be a 1, right? Um, by the way, if you have this multiplication, and now the symbol is here, right? The inverse of 3 is what? Hmm? Very good. So because where the element 1 indicates what is the inverse, okay? So it's even written here, but um, on the other side, 
Anyway, very good. So we look at this and say, we want to make this 0, 1. So what is the easiest? We find the inverse of that, which is 1, z one 0 bitwise 2 decimal, and multiply the first packet with it. So what do we mean, the first packet? So we take now um, this one and multiply it with this symbol, with this symbol, with this symbol, and so on. So always two bits, right? And not just the encoding vector, but also the whole packet. Once we have done that, we have 0, 1, and there's the rest. We don't care about the rest. First thing, we want to get this 0, OK? And then now it becomes a little bit tricky. Now we have the, the pivot that we call pivot because here's a 1, right? For the first row, multiply the new first row with the first symbol of the second packet, which is 0 point width, and subtract it from the second one. So we take this symbol, multiply it with this, take this, multiply it with here, 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 and then we subtract it, right? So we have to multiply 0, 1, 1, 1 with this one, which gives us 0, 1, 0, 1. And then we're subtracting another XOR, um, 0, 1, 0, 1 from 1, 0, 1, 0, and this gives us 0, 0, 1, which is good. Okay? Now you could say, why didn't we take the inversion of packet 2 and subtract it from each other? Um, the problem is, building the inverse is always a problem, complexity wise. Not in this field element, but later. So there are some ways that is good, and other ways that are not so good. The nice thing is, you don't care. Because whatever I tell you now, I just do this to explain you how it works. Later we have a coding library that does this for you. But it's very important to understand what is this library doing? Why does it take time, right? And you can be sure that the people that we have worked with in Arlborg and this Arlborg University, um, and now we also created the company Steinhoff, they know what they're doing when it comes to the library. It's, it's high highly um, efficient and we have done a lot of project with that. Now, having said this, now we have um, subtracted that, it looks like this, right? Zero, zero, and now we were lucky. Why? Because it is already zero, one, exactly what we wanted to have. But this was just by luck, right? If there's another one, you just take this, take the inverse and multiply it through once in order to get zero, decimal one decimal here, right? So now we only have to clean up this one, and this is very easy. So the last symbol of packet two, this one, was already zero one. If not, not you have to multiply the packet with the inverse of the symbol, I've told you this. Now we use packet two to clean it up backwards, multiply packet two with the second symbol, zero one, of the packet one, and subtract it from each other. So we take zero, zero, one, zero, and this new encoding vector becomes 0011. Subtract from each other, and you get the new one, and it looks like this. And now you have exactly the same. This is packet number one, and this is packet number two. OK? And don't forget to do the same what you've done for the encoding vector, also on the other one, if you want to do it. Now, the last one is we have encode, decode, what is missing, recoding. Um, with recoding, it's very simple. Um, we take our two packets here and, um, and then we say, okay, randomly we take 0, 1 and repeat it. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Here we took um, randomly 1, 1 and repeated all the stuff. We just do an XOR over that. That is um, easily, uh, sorry, not, e not true. <laughs> we, um, we, we multiply 0, 1 bitwise um, with 0, 1 and this equals the 0, 1 and then we have 0, 0 bitwise multiplied with 1, 1 bitwise, which x equals 0, 0, and then x or both of the results, and that gives us 0, 1 that goes here, and so on, right? You can try it out. Next packet is the same here, and you can do with the payload, uh, but I don't know what the payload is, so I don't do it, and it's even cumbersome not to do that.